Hey, my name is Alex and I'm the pastor of X Church. Thanks so much for taking time to listen or watch this talk today. I hope it encourages and inspires you on your journey of experiencing and extending God's love. If you like what you hear, you can go to xchurch.com and get more information about our church and ministry. And you can even donate to support what we're doing here in Baldwin and beyond. If you are local to the area, please join us in person for one of our X gatherings. We meet on Sundays at 10 a.m. in our storefront location we call the space located inside the Claymont Shopping Center. Thanks so much. Here's the message. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our new series, Level Up. Jared is excited. He's going to get all my references. He might be the only one, but that's okay. We're in a series about growth, growing. But before we get into that, I need to be able to see you guys. Could you hit those lights for me, Benjamin? Thank you so much, sir. Your shining faces, mainly your eyes right now, okay, but that's okay. Glad you're in the building and online. So we're talking about growth or leveling up. See what I did there? Come on, right? In a video game, your character will grow to defeat different bosses and levels, and they call that leveling up. So we're going to level up together. What do you say? Wow, come on, let's try a little bit harder. What do you say? Yeah. All right, now this isn't my idea. It comes out of 2 Peter 3, 18a. Here's what it says. Ready? But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So here we have the disciple Peter who did life with Jesus is now older and grown. He's written this letter to believers. And as he wraps it up, he says, hey, make sure you're growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus. But why? We talk about spiritual growth in the church context. Maybe you've grown up in church and you know that, right? We talk about what it means to grow, but why do we grow? I think that that's a question a lot of pastors don't spend enough time answering. If I'm being completely honest with you, why? Why is it important to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus? What's the benefit? Why would God say that? Why would he want that in his book, right? Well, I'd highly encourage us over the next couple of weeks to press in and actually answer that question, but then not only answer the why question, but also the how does it work question. You with me? Amen. All right. So in order to do that, I want to make this statement. We're going to be working from this statement over the next couple of weeks. This is the why. Ready? It'll be up on the screens. We grow to withstand and win the world. What do I mean by withstand? Well, in scripture, as we're going to read in a moment, it means to resist or to stand firm. Well, why would we do that? Why is that important? And how does that work out in terms of winning? Like, how do these two things connect? Stay tuned. We're going to get there. Okay. But I think what we need to do to really answer this why question, why would Peter say grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? We need to take a little bit of a bird's eye view and back up a little bit in the book of the Bible. Does that make sense? So let's go to verse 17, the verse right before that. Here's what it says. You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and to lose your own stability. Stability. I want you to remember that word, stability. He's saying, hey, there are people who wanna get you sidetracked. 
This world wants to get you off track, off God's track. They want you, okay, to do what they want you to do. But they disguise it by telling you that you can do you, right? But it's a trap. I knew somebody was gonna do that. Sorry, I heard it. (laughs) Star Wars reference, again, this is a very nerdy thing that's happening right now. And so I apologize if you're not a nerd or maybe you missed the video game craze and you're not a video gamer, but I'm gonna try to make this relatable to everybody. The point is that he is saying if you want to live stable, when, when, when crap hits the fan, life gets hard, okay, things don't go your way and you hear lies about your identity and who you are and you succumb or you feel like you're going to succumb to the pressures that society places on you, There is a stability that comes through growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus. See, so what he's saying is, hey, I want you to be stable. How do you do that? Grow in the grace, which is the unearned favor of God, and the knowledge of who God is and who he says you are. We just sang about it a second ago, right? I'm a child of God. If I've put my full faith in Jesus, I am a child of God. Yes, I am. Stability. And then... We go to the rest of verse 18, which says this. To him, Jesus, be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. So in other words, what he's saying here is, hey, I want you to be stable. I want there to be a stability in your life. It's your stability, but it's for his glory, right? So in other words, it's so that you can withstand the world and what it throws at you, but then so you can win the world By making Jesus known, that's what it means to glorify God, to make him known, okay? That's how you win them. Make sense? Am I connecting those dots? And so today, typically what I would do is I would give all this overview about what it means to um, grow and why we're doing this series, and then I would jump right to the how, and I'd give you a part one in a more official way. But I wanna just stay right here in the pregame segment of our series, okay? And so today, part one is the tutorial, all right? (laughs) Have you ever played a video game and there's a tutorial? What's the tutorial's job? It's to show you the controls, the ropes, to get a feel for how the game is played. So that's what we're gonna do today. It's the tutorial. The other day, Ashlyn and I, she tries to play video games with me. Um, Bless her heart. And so, and, and so we try, and uh, the other day we were playing Tomb Raider on the PlayStation 1, okay? And uh, there was no tutorial. So Ashlyn has the controller, and she is trying to get Laura Croft, the Tomb Raider, to the next part of the level, and she falls into some water, and then we watch the character, Laura Croft, that Ashlyn is supposedly supposed to control to the end of the game, drown a slow, painful death. <laughs> on screen, and I thought, this is why this is rated T for teen, kids, because that was a little intense, right? What's the deal? It'd be nice to know what the controls are. Can I swim? Is water bad in this game? It depends, right, on the game. We all know this. And so here we are, not being very productive in our gameplay. Um, Or this is my favorite one, right? Guys, you ever play video games with your girlfriends or with your wives um, and you're, you're playing Xbox or something and then all of a sudden they start doing one of these? You know what I'm talking about? They start trying to steer and they're, pull up, pull up, left, left, right? I'm like, I'm like girl, this ain't a Wii. You know what I'm saying? This ain't a Wii. This ain't a we, right? Like that is not how it goes, right? And so, and so it's good to understand, okay, where we're going, how this works. So today on the tutorial, um, during this part one of this series called Level Up, I want to unpack that vision statement we just read a moment ago about why we're to grow, to withstand and to win the world. I want to really understand that. So, so as we move forward, we've got the why right? We really understand the why. So then in the next three parts, we're going to get to the how, okay? Because here's the deal. I think a lot of times 
when we do Bible studies or, or when we hear talks or sermons at conferences and churches, um, it, it's a lot about the what, right? Jesus, God, faith, Bible, and that's all fine. But, but I think that, that we miss out when we don't answer the why question and we certainly waste our time if we don't get to the how question. And I wanna be a how church. How do we do this? So that when you leave this space tomorrow, you can implement what you've learned. That's the goal, right? When you leave this space today, I should say, and into tomorrow, you thought you were gonna stay here till tomorrow, <laughs> which I'm pretty pumped about it, so we could be here a while. I'm here for it. That's right. So. Thank you, Wyatt. That's right. So I'm going to pray, and then we're going to unpack that today during this tutorial. Are you guys with me so far? Yes. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness and grace. Thank you for this series, Lord, to learn what it means to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to, to not only have stability, but Lord, to bring you glory, to withstand this world and all that it throws at us, but also to win the world and save lives through the gospel of Jesus Christ by experiencing your love together and then being motivated to go and extend it. We pray that these would be your words and not mine. I pray that, Father, we would not just simply be hearers of the word, but we would be doers who act and be blessed in our doing. In your name we pray, amen. Okay, so observation number one is withstand. What does it mean to resist the world? What does it, what does it mean? Why is that important? These feel like they're at odds, right? Winning people, but also withstanding them. It's kind of this awkward tension that we live in as believers, right? Some people say it this way, you're to be in the world, but not of the world. Maybe that's something you've grown up hearing before. What, what does this look like? Well, I want to turn your attention to 1 John chapter 2, and we're going to pick it up in verse 15. By the way, if you have the Church Center app, you can look up X Church, and then you can find my notes by smashing the big notes button, and all my scriptures will be there as well. But here's what it says, do not love the world. Now, pause. This is weird because one of the most famous verses of all time is John 3, 16, which says, for God so loved the world. So why then does John record later that we're not to love the world, right? Well, again, context is king. Let's keep reading. He says, do not love the world or the things that it offers you, or the things that it offers you. He's not talking about the people of the world. See, when Jesus said, for God so loved the world, he's talking about people. This world, okay, that we're talking about here is the ideologies, the patterns, the systems of this world. That's what we're talking about, right? Because in Romans 12 too, it says that we're not to conform to the patterns of this world, but we're to love the people of this world. Am I making sense? You picking up what I'm putting down today? So he says this, don't love the world nor the things that it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave but anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. So I notice a couple things there. I notice a few priorities of the world. I wanna use that word because in and of themselves, many of those things aren't bad, right? There were three of them, ready? There were pleasures, pride, and possessions. Okay, well, pleasure is a good thing. God created physical pleasure, right? Have you ever been into a Big Mac? And they all said amen, right? Right? No? Wow, I'm alone right now. I feel so... Okay, a Chick-fil-A sandwich. Way to be just generic Christian right now. Anyways, um, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It is so good. Isn't it though? It's so good, right? Um, you know, listen, if you're married, sex is awesome. Like, I'm a fan. 
quite frankly. I mean, let's just be real. <laughs> Bella's like, oh my gosh, what is going on? What church have they brought me to, right? So sorry. Um, but the point is, in the context of marriage, it's awesome. Physical pleasure in and of itself is not bad. Pride, it's good to take pride in our achievements, okay? It's good. And then finally, possessions. It's not wrong to have stuff. Christians don't have to be poor all the time. I don't know why we think that you're more holy if you're poor. That's not always true, right? But here's the key. There's a word in there, and it's the word craving. Um, other translations will say lust. And what I would say is this. I think it's the misplaced priority, gotta have it, desire. That's the problem. When we elevate these things, okay, above God. So, come on now. So, so in other words, it's pleasures. Yeah, sometimes though, we run to food, right? We run to food to solve our problems. At least I do. That's one of my struggles. And it's wrong. Or, or maybe, maybe we do run to physical pleasure, right? And we struggle with pornography or lust, or maybe it's, you know, maybe you're in a relationship and, and, and you're pushing those boundaries with your, with your partner or whatever it might be because, because we crave these things. And sometimes it's easy to talk ourselves into a corner and say, oh, it's really fine because of this, because of that. We love each other. We're being safe. We're consenting, right? All this stuff. But it's when we crave it, Pride, it's good to be proud of your kids, but listen to me <laughs> as I'm driving down Manchester Road. No one cares that your child is an honor student. I'm so sorry, like good for them. They're so smart, great, you know, but like I don't care. Like I don't know you and I don't need to know that about you. Like on the back of your car, I'm so sorry. Uh, my son plays varsity. Um, did I tell you that he made varsity? Like, what is that? Like, it's cool. Good for him. Like, what? I mean, like, you had anything to do with that. I don't even understand. It's like, <laughs> right? I, I, I just, gosh, man. If you live in West St. Louis County, you really understand what I'm talking about right now. Okay. Um, possessions. Got to have the next thing right? Got to have the next iPhone. Got to have the next whatever, right? PlayStation. Yeah. <laughs> for me, for me, I went retro because I can afford retro. I can't afford a PS5. I can't afford a PS1. You know, I'm balling on a budget. <laughs> know what I mean? Um, but yeah, you're right. Exactly. Exactly. So, so it's when we misplace these priorities. Be careful. Don't love these things too much. And it's an easy, slow creep. So then how do we withstand these things? Because we know that if we don't withstand them, we forsake our stability, right? Going back to the why. Because those things eventually let you down and run out. He says they're going to fade away. So then it's the next thing, and it's the next person, and it's the next relationship, and it's the next... Oreo? Anybody? No? Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. But look at Ephesians chapter 6. This is what we read in Ephesians chapter 6. I love this. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Come we on. have an enemy. That's good. He's called the prince of this world, right? So he's influencing all of this. For we do not wrestle, watch this, against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Yeah. This is not, listen, a physical battle. This is not a political battle. This is a spiritual battle. It manifests itself that way, okay? This is not just a health crisis or whatever we want to call it, okay? It's a spiritual crisis, all of it, all of it. It's connected in that way. Am I making sense? We got to be aware because here's what he says, ready? Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand, there's the word, 
I didn't just pull that word out of thin air like that's where it came from. Withstand, resist, stability, because these things want to get you off track, off kilter. In the evil day, it says, withstand in the evil day. I think we're in some evil days, yeah? And having done all to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as for shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication or praying for all of the saints. You might be wondering, I didn't grow up in a church context or I'm new to faith. What is the armor of God? Where do I get it? Or maybe, let's be honest, you grew up in the church context and you aren't new to faith, but you still don't really understand what it is. Anybody like just wanna be honest and say, yeah, I don't really get it. Well, I wanna say this, ready? The armor of God isn't an outfit. It's an outlook. One more time. The armor of God isn't an outfit. It's an outlook. He's saying, keep alert, stand firm, be aware, pray at all times. It's an outlook. Colossians 3, 1 through 4. If then you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. Why? Why? He goes on and he says, because if you put your faith in Jesus, he says that Christ is your life. Let's read it, ready? He says this, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. And when Christ who is your life appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Set your mind, it's every day, praying that over yourself. God, give me your righteousness. God, help me to take up that shield of faith. It's an outlook, setting your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. Listen, have you ever tried to have a conversation with a highly creative person while they're busy trying to be creative? My wife has, okay? So <laughs> let me explain. All right. Um, I uh, wear many hats as lead pastor. So I do, for, for those of you who don't know, I do all of, our, um, all of our graphics, video production, all that stuff. I do all that stuff um, for our church. Um, I do it because I love it. It's just something that I've always been in, interested in that. Um, I, also, um, I also serve on a staff of, of, a, of a team um, uh, part, part-time as a brand manager for an organization that plants churches in South Asia, and I do all their graphic design and, and all that sort of stuff. So I'm really into design work, creativity. Like, I love doing all that stuff, right? Um, and so, and so there will be times when the other day, I was working on, I think that video we watched earlier or something like that, I was working on the slides, the designs, and I was sitting there on my, on my Mac doing all the stuff, like getting all these ideas, because what I'll do is, I, I'm like 99% I'm like sure I have ADD, I've never been, I've, I don't know for sure, but it's not really hard to believe, okay, so like I'll be, so this is what I'll do, I'll be like, I'll have my Bible open, and I'll have my commentary app open, I'll have my notebook open, I'll be like in the middle of my, I'm very visual, so I'll be like in the middle of a sermon idea, it's like this. I'm like, level up. And I'm like, we're going to do this video game. And then I stop. And then right in the middle of all my notes, I'm like, I have to make this look. I have to visualize. So then I started designing. So I, I design, and then I read the Bible. And then I design. I do it all together. It's, there's no rhyme or reason, and it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't. Nobody understands what I'm talking about. So I'm like really into it. So the other day, Ashlyn needs to talk to me. So she comes into my office. There's a chair in my office. She comes in. She sits down. She has something important to tell me. So we start talking, right? So we start talking. Apparently, I, I only know that she was there and I only know that we were talking because she told me after the conversation that apparently we had had one. Oh my gosh. I did not even know she was in the room. 
Um, I, I genuinely thought like, you know, there was, I, I don't remember. She's here talking to me. I'm designing, doing my, I'm in my zone. I'm in my, I'm focused. I'm in my zone. And she's over here just asking me very important questions about our life and about things, this plans. And I'm, I apparently, apparently, I am communicating back to her. I just, I don't know what I'm saying, but I'm saying stuff to her. And so she gets done and she finally, all of a sudden I hear, shoom. And I'm like, what's that? It's the door. <laughs> Apparently that was the moment I realized I must've been having a conversation with my wife and I don't remember it, okay? So like it, the distraction is real, okay? Cause I'm just focused. Here's the thing. Sometimes though, I think we need more of that when it comes to our spiritual walk, okay? Um, so many things are vying for your attention all the time. And they're not as important as your wife, okay? I just want to be clear. That's where the analogy breaks down, okay? That's where the analogy breaks down. But there are so many people saying, hey, come here. Hey, come spend your weekend like this. Hey, hey, um, spend your money with us. Right? You following me? But when we're not focused on this up here, it's easy to just start saying yes to all the things that don't matter as much. Does that make sense? So the armor is an outlook. It's every day saying, okay, praying at all times in the spirit. It doesn't mean you have to pray like, God, can I take a sip of this water? Would that glorify you today? Don't be like that. Don't be weird. Okay. <laughs> but it's throughout your life. It's acknowledging him in all your ways. Acknowledge him. It says in Proverbs and he will direct your path right? It's an outlook. If we're going to withstand, it's an outlook, okay? But I've got a disclaimer about withstanding. I want to say this, and if you're taking notes, you can write this down, okay? Withstanding is about, listen, withstanding is about thriving, not surviving. Here's what I mean by that. A lot of times in the church context, okay, we're, we're taught to believe that withstanding and resisting the world means that we stay in our little bubble, right? And I've talked about this before and I won't go into detail, but a lot of the time we think as long as I can just stay in my little bubble and I never do anything bad and I never cuss and I never whatever and I never, then I'm gonna be fine. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The problem is, the problem is then we never get to the winning part. How are we gonna win people? To him be the glory, right? So it can't just be turtle, turtle, turtle all the time, right? So how do we find this balance? Furthermore, furthermore, it's not because God doesn't want you to have any fun, okay? Because I'm going to tell you right now, um, I love what I do. I love it. I love what I do. But I'm going to tell you right now, when we decided to plant this church, it was some of the worst horrible stuff ever, okay, in my life. Um, it was difficult. There were many days where I look back and I go, oh my goodness, I don't know how I did that. Yesterday at X Men Group, Ray made a comment. He goes, you know, it's funny. You, you, know, you read the news headlines from 30, 40 years ago and you go, it was that bad? I lived through that? Like, how did, I, how did, we, how did we make it? Like, how did we survive, right? That's kind of how I feel, Right? So, so the elders know, the, the Carltons, you guys know, you know, we'll recount, like, remember when we used to load in and load out a trailer full of stuff and, and, and every morning at 7 a.m. In the, in the snow? And I just think about all these things that, that I look back now and I'm like, if God would have told me that that was going to happen, I wouldn't have signed up, yeah. right? I wouldn't have signed up. People that were with us that are no longer here, just, just, just the loss of just, friendships and relationships and it's been hard it's been really hard if I knew that at the time I, there's no way, way I would have said yes but on the other side of that is just incredible blessing because I get to do this I really believe that I, I get to do what I'm doing right now like this is so cool so I'm not saying it's perfect but it's awesome so withstanding is about saying no to the things that the world wants you to say yes to all the time so that you can say yes to God. And when you say yes to God, you grow, right, in grace and in knowledge, and then you get blessing. There's so much blessing that comes 
It's not about just surviving. He wants you to thrive. He wants you to have a life and have it abundantly, right? We, we quote that passage all the time. Why? Look at what it says in Luke 11. These are the words of Jesus. He says, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. What is he saying there? He's saying, hey, if we're gonna talk about blessing right now in the context of this story, okay? He goes, he goes blessing comes when people hear my words and they obey it. So when they say no to that stuff, or when they deprioritize that stuff, okay, it's not because I want them not to have fun. It's because I have something better. We've got to figure that out. We've got to learn that because I don't think that, it, honestly, in Sunday school, I don't feel like that's how it was communicated to me as a kid. I did not receive it that way. It was not, hey, don't do the bad stuff because God has better stuff. It was, don't do the bad stuff or God will be mad at you. I literally remember a Sunday school te teacher telling me, and she meant, well, I know she did. Well, you know, your sin builds a wall between you and God. Mm -hmm. Well, no, if I have my faith in Jesus, it says nothing can separate me from the love that is found in, in Christ Jesus. So while my sin might have consequences, mm -hmm. and while I may not be able to feel God's presence mm -hmm. the same as when I'm regularly praying at all times in the spirit, I, I thought I, there was this wall that God couldn't get to me now. That's how I, no, he's bigger than that. Because when he looks at you, he sees you as righteous when you put your faith in Jesus. So, so we've got to understand this, but I want to read another verse. Sometimes we run to the other extreme. God wants me to thrive, Right? I'm gonna go do what I wanna do, sprinkle some Jesus on top, I'm good, right? He'll bless me. He wants to bless your business. I don't know that. I can't actually tell you that. Some pastors will and they don't bat an eyelash. I, I don't know. God wants to bless you for your obedience, but I don't know that he wants to bless your business. What if your business is disobedience? What if that's not what he wants for you? I don't know. I can't say that. What I can say is he wants to bless you when you obey him. You don't have to earn his love, you understand? But his blessings do follow obedience. That, those are different, I just, okay? He loves you no matter what you do, but blessing follows obedience. Blessing follows obedience. We talk about that a lot. So the other side of the coin, though, is also that, that, that then, then because we have freedom in Christ, we can kind of do whatever we want to do, right? And, and so, and so, that kind of is at odds when he says, do not love the world, don't love these things, right? Why, why does he say that? Because they're gonna get you sidetracked, unstable. Look what it says in 2 Corinthians 6, 12. You might say, I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. And even though I'm allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. I remember being a kid to relate it to video games and walking into GameStop and begging my dad, can I get this game? Can I get that game? Can I do this thing? Whatever. And what you would do, some of you guys know, is you'd have like a stack of games, okay, that you've played to death. So you take them in, you trade them into GameStop. This is the greatest scam <laughs> in the world right here. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Sawyer knows what I'm talking about. You take in like, you take in some premium titles, okay? And you're like, I wanna trade these in. And they're like, I can give you 30 cents and this lip balm that's been sitting on the, you know what I mean? Like, that's the, like, that's what they do. They, and then you got to come up with your, you know, then, then dad's got to still come up with $49.70 to buy the new Mario game or whatever it is, right? So, so I remember thinking one day when I'm an adult, I'll be able to walk into GameStop and I, my dad won't be there and I'll be able to buy whatever I want. <laughs> my wife laughs at me, right? <laughs> so the other day, I'm at, I'm at a video game store, and I'm like, I'm an adult. I have money in my bank. I can buy whatever I want. And then I thought, but just because I can doesn't mean I should. The other day, I was in a group chat. It was me and Ashlyn and my buddy Matt and his wife Jade, and I texted Matt a picture and said, hey, do you want me to pick this up for you? I was at a video game store. 
And Jade, his wife, texted about it, absolutely not. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. And I was like, what? Like, come on. And, he, and, then, and then this is Matt's response. I'm outing you right now, Matt. I know you're sleeping right now. So uh, he works nights. So Jade's watching. Jade's watching. Okay, this is good. Okay. So, so, <laughs> so he responds and he goes, I've learned um, that no doesn't actually mean no. It means yes, but there's consequences. <laughs> right? <laughs> You know that's true. <laughs> and all the all the all the married men are like, that's exactly how that works, right? Yeah. So there are con- so just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. Why? Because there are consequences. And here he says, hey, I don't want to become a slave to anything. Because that's what this stuff does. It leaves you empty. In Romans 6, 16, it says, Don't you know that you're a slave of whatever you choose to obey? So part of withstanding is God wants to keep you free. He set you free, live like it. Don't give into that stuff, it's empty. Withstand. Am I making sense today? All right, second observation. This one's my favorite, win. How do we win the world? What what does that mean? It's kind of an old school term sometimes, right? But, but essentially, what we mean by winning people to Christ is we want them to understand how good Jesus is and put their faith in him, right? That's what we mean by win the world, yeah, that's so good. right? Okay, Mario fans, here we go. Um, in, in Super Mario Brothers, there are worlds, okay, which are a collection of levels. That's how life is, right? And so you have to, you have to withstand all the bad stuff so that you can win the world and move on, Right? We want to win the world, but in a different way. We want to win the world by helping as many people come to know the love of Jesus as possible. Right? That's why we're here. That's why we're here. That's what it's all about. So how does this happen? How does this happen? Well, let's go to John 3, 16, one of the most famous verses in the world. For God so loved the world. So this is what he's talking about, the people. He wants to win them. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him won't perish, but will have everlasting life. And then it says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him, the world might be saved. One, we wanna win the world, but we can't do it if we're all off kilter. It's why we gotta be stable, withstand, so that we can win them. Making sense? Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because the more like him we are, the more effective we're going to be. I want to. I want to say this. Sometimes, when we think the world, we think these people we don't know yet, right? But 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 sometimes I think the world, okay, might be your neighbor. It might be a sibling, it might be a parent, right? It might be that coworker that you just really can't stand. I mean, you love them like Jesus, but you don't like them? No, that's just me? Come on. You all know you got those people you love, but you don't like. Ah, like we're getting honest. I'm almost done. I promise. But I want to come back to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I read it a couple weeks ago, but I want to pull something else out of it as we wrap up today. To the weak I became weak, Paul says. This is the apostle church planter, right? He says, I've become all things to all people that by all means I might save some. I do it for the sake of the gospel that I may share with them and its blessings. He says, but then he says this, watch this. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control, withstanding in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I don't run aimlessly. I have an aim. What's my aim? That I might win more of them. That's his aim. I don't box as one just beating the air. I've got an aim. But I want to say this. I want to be clear, okay? I want, I, want to, I, want to just, I, want to, I want to make sure that you guys understand this. The aim isn't numbers scored. It's lives restored. One more time. The aim isn't numbers scored. It's lives restored. 
I'm not interested in just seeing more numbers. I'm not just interested in seeing more, as I keep saying, butts in seats. My mom really likes it when I use it, that term. She really appreciates how sophisticated that sounds, right? Um, but she's not here today. She's in Florida. So anyways, she's watching online. Hi, mom. <laughs> anyways, the point is, the point is that our goal in winning is not so that we can grow our membership roster, right? It's not so that we can look good. But I'll be honest with you. Can I just tell on myself for a second? I struggle with that sometimes. You know how many times I've been told by well-meaning family that I, quote, don't have a real job? Well, thank you. (laughs) But it doesn't feel very good. Oh, you know, like you don't have a real, you know, like real job, you know. And before we didn't have a building, it was, well, you don't really have a real church, you know? And I thought, well, if I get a building, then I got a real church, right? Oh, well, how many people come to you? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. I'm just just being honest. Like, that's the stuff that I hear. Those are the lies that I, right? Oh, you're too young. Oh, you, you know, you don't have enough education. Oh, these are the things that I've I've been told. Who would follow, I've been told, no one would follow you. So then in my mind, because I'm, I'm a fighter, it's my personality, I will fight. I, I, have, I don't have a passive aggressive bone in my body. I'm just aggressive. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I will just fight you, okay? It's just true, okay? Um, then I think, well, I'll show them. I'll show them. And one day when, you know, when I'm on a billboard, you know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, we're not, yeah, no, we're not, we're not letting that happen. Um, then, then they'll see. Wrong motivation. And, and, and in fact, the apostle Paul warns a church in Galatia of that because they had, they had been visited by some false teachers and he said, hey, those false teachers, they are so eager to win your favor, but their intentions are not good. Why, why, why do we wanna win the world? Why do we want to win the world? Because, because I know who I am without Jesus, and I don't miss that guy at all. And there are moments when I have Jesus, but I don't live like I have Jesus, and I don't like that guy either, right? Yep. But I know what Jesus can do in a person's life, yeah. and I want to see that happen for as many people as possible, yeah. right? So, so I want to say this as we close today as a disclaimer. Listen, winning means serving, not spectating. As we wrap up today, I just want to say, we, we believe that we're a family and a ministry, X Church is, right? And speaking of family, the Jones, I have not seen your faces in so long. I mean, I see part of your faces, but that is, that is enough. I'm so glad to see you like in the flesh, you know? Zoom just doesn't do it, you know? Facebook doesn't do it. I just love seeing you guys. I'm so glad you guys are here. Oh, right? We, we don't want to build a, 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 a monument to ourselves. We don't want just a bunch of spectators. We want servants, ministers who are using their gifts and their talents. And you'll find out real quick, we'll put you to work, right? Why? Because if we're going to win the world, God's design for winning the world happens in a church family context. Did you know that? The church is God's mechanism to reach the world, to win the world. You cannot win it solo. Stay tuned for part four, squat up. Anyways, okay, that was just a little, that was just a little, okay, squat up. Some of you got that. Some of you are older than 30 and that's totally fine. It's okay. I have to Google terms too. It's I have to Google stuff too. It's okay. I'm still trying to figure it out. So, so, so maybe, so maybe for you today, it's maybe for you, it's very really. I want to end. I want to end with this. For for you today, it's this. Maybe it's okay. I want to grow. I I want to. I want to level up. I want to be more like Jesus. I I want to. I want to withstand the world and all these temptations and struggles and whatever. But, but, um, I, I need some help. I need a family. Well, guess what? You're sitting in one right now. We're a family, right? 
And so maybe today, your next step in growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus so that you can withstand and win the world is that you, you might wanna become a part of this family. And, and the way you do that is really simple. You can go in that app right there, the Church Center app, look up X Church, and just tap that Explore button. That's it. And then there you can request information about membership, and we'd love to just take you to lunch, talk to you, answer any questions that you have about how, how we do what we do. And nothing's off limits. You want to see the books? Cool. Right? We're, we're pretty much just take us or leave us. Maybe that's you today. Maybe, maybe that's what you want to do. Or maybe today it's, it's you're a part of this family and you want to serve. Or, or, maybe, or maybe today it's that if you're honest, you just need to get with somebody else and you need to just ask them to hold you accountable and say, hey, I, I, I need to be growing. I need to be leaning in. I need to be, so that we can win more people for Jesus. I wanna end with this story today. I wanna end with this story today. Um, last Sunday, Last Sunday, um, uh, I get a, a, I see a Facebook post um, from a girl named Sierra. So um, if you don't know who Sierra is, um, Sierra ha- has been a part of our church family since October. And she is going back to Indiana where she lives because um, she was only here for this. She's a student at Maryville. And um, she wrote this post on Sunday on Facebook. She took a photo of the space and posted it to her Facebook page and Instagram, and, 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 here's what she, and here's what she said. As the school year comes to an end, it means I have to say see you later to my church family. When I first came to school, I knew I wanted to find a church, but I was too homesick and scared to go out and find one. But that all changed when I was invited to a college worship night at X Church. I went to the worship night where I felt Jesus stronger than I ever have before. That Sunday, I feel like God was telling me to get up and go to morning service. Even though I was scared to go into a new place by myself, I went. And let me say, it may have been the best decision I could have made. I've been going to X since, and I have been given a second family. God gave me a family I didn't even know I needed. Although I am scared of what the future holds, one thing I know for sure is that the people of X Church will have my back forever. I love every single person in this church and I am already counting down the days until I come back to visit. If you feel God pulling you in a direction that maybe makes you nervous or scared, trust me when I say, listen to him because it could be the best thing that ever happens to you. Win the world. That's what it's about right there. You ready to win the world? Yeah. You ready to do it? You ready to level up? So I just have one question. Are you ready to grow? Are you ready to grow? Because that's what we're gonna do over the next three weeks. You with me? Let's pray. Let's pray. God, help us to grow. Help us to to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, you, Jesus. Help us to um, give ourselves to you in that way. Father, so that, so that more people can come to know the good, incredible news of your son, and your love. We pray all of this in your name, amen. All right, before you go, X students tonight, sixth through 12th grade, right? 5.30, McDonald's, so I guess some of you aren't into that, but all your favorite dipping sauces, all the McNuggets that you can eat, all the cheeseburgers that you can eat. We're gonna play some spoons, yeah? It's gonna be, but but like, intense spoons, all right? Um, uh, We're gonna, we're gonna, break open the Bible together. So I hope to see you guys there, okay? Thanks so much. Hope you've experienced God's love, whether you're watching online or in the room today. Go and extend it. We'll see you next time.